Well guys, do you know when you walk up to a car and the closer you get, I hadn't paid much attention to this, I'll be honest with you, we have so many MGFs and TFs come through. Um, and I knew it must have been a relatively good one because it's inside now, building here and it's gonna stay inside. Whereas normally speaking, to be perfectly frank, they live outside because they're normally, our standards are high, my standards are high, and they're normally okay. Um, they're good value, they're good value. They're 1,500, 2,000, 2,500 pounds, and they represent fantastic value for money. But what I can't do is I can't put a lovely low mileage Manta or a Daimler or a Jaguar or an MG or an RS Turbo outside and leave a two and put a 2,000 pound MG F or TF inside, obviously. But where I'm going is I hadn't had uh, anything to do with this car and so I just walked up to it now. We've just been doing a series of photographs and videos this afternoon. I want to get a load lined up ready for next sale. And as I was walking to this, I thought, oh, this looks quite a nice car. And I don't think I've been disappointed because the bonnet was up and it looks lovely in there. Now that spare wheel hasn't been out. We've got the tool roll in there. We've still got the bubbles on the tire, original pattern tire as well. We've got some numbers down there on the plaque. So underneath there, I thought, oh, that's lovely. Battery isolator as well, that's good. I thought, well, that's as good as you're gonna get, really, underneath there. So tick that box. And then I just went round and opened the doors and the boot, uh, ready to do this video. And I looked in, turned the ignition on, and saw 14,000 miles at the same time looking at everything else, looking at door cards, pedal rubbers, steering wheel, the grain on the steering wheel, the gear knob, you name it, you just take the whole lot in in a great big sort of flurry really, and thought, yeah, no wonder it looks nice. Yeah, so I'm assuming the 14,000 miles are, are gonna be correct. I'm assuming we've got some paperwork for that. Please do have a word or more, better still, when you come down to have a look, because we're probably gonna have six, seven, eight of these between now and auction day, go through all the paperwork. It's certainly got all that feeling of being correct. So I'm sure we have got something down there. Seats are lovely, inside's a lovely place to be. Dash and so forth, door cards. It's all looking about right. So common sense has got to kick in, hasn't it, with, um, with some of these uh, inspections and vehicles in general. Uh, we've got a car cover there, we've got a hood cover there, we've got a lovely clear expansion tank there with uh, uh, with clear, uh, not clear, but red, clean is the word I was looking for, clean antifreeze there, which is nice to see. We've also got lovely clean engine oil in there. Let's put that back in there. Get it in the right way, there we go, there she is. So, engine <laughs> the front area as good as you're going to get back area from what you can see obviously most of the work you do underneath from these inside's lovely and hard top so we're on a winner here surely aren't we on a winner now i did just fire it up a few moments ago just to get that initial cold start sound quiet as a mouse wheels tyres from what I can see, body. Ah, it's a sunstorm. Aha, uh -huh, there you go. Better still, it's getting better and better, isn't it? Yeah. I'll be buying this in a minute, the more I spend around it. But there you go. Now this will be the car I would think that would set the running at the sale. Because in the world of MGFs and TFs, it's up there. And they are a different, so get your head around the fact guys, they are a different price band to the average car. Miles apart, miles apart. So uh, yes, you can't say, well, you know, mine's nearly as good, mine's just, no, honestly. They are miles apart. We are, we're, we're sort of almost comparing onions and oranges, really. So you wait and see on sale day, that will be reflected in the hammer price of this car because it is, it's, it's so much higher than what you normally see.
see in front of the camera there. So please come down and have a look. Like I say, we've got a bit of all sorts. If you're an MG man, great. We'll have half a dozen of these. We've got some Mazda MX-5s. I've just done a lovely low mileage Mazda MX-5 over there. Another limited edition Arizona over there. They are, they do both marks represent fantastic value for money. In fact, as I said when I was doing the uh, video for the Arizona there, the, um, the Bangus um, restoration team have just bought uh, an Arizona to restore. And we done a, and they bought an MGF, funny enough, there's an MGF out there, but a 51 went reg, I think. And I said, what you must do, what you should do, whether they'll take any notice, is do a head to head on the cars and just work out and just demonstrate really the, you know, the positives and negatives with both models. I said, because they're both in the same, in the same choice bracket, aren't they? Um, you know, the MG people love to stay loyal to the MG brand. They probably had all sorts of MGs over the years, probably finishing off with an MGB. They now like the idea of central locking, power steering. The girls love to get involved to drive them and drive them and, and, and these drive themselves. So, and, and the MG uh, club in general is a fantastic warming club. So, not saying the Mazda's not, but MG has just that little bit of something, I suppose, doesn't it? So anyhow, I'll stop waffling. You come down and have a look, make your own mind up, go through the paperwork that we've got in the office. I think you'll agree, it's a nice car.